Hey everybody, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. Today we're going to look at Nintendo 64 emulation on the PlayStation Vita. And this video is a long time coming. When I made my first PlayStation Vita video, where I basically reviewed this device as a retro handheld gaming console, I didn't even test Nintendo 64, because at the time the compatibility with Nintendo 64 was just not that great. And as fate would have it, the very day that I dropped that video, a new emulator was released as well. And so for months now, people have been leaving comments to say, hey, there is a good Nintendo 64 emulator. And I agree, and this is the video for it. Now this emulator is called Daedalus X64, and one of my favorite things about it is that it takes advantage of the Vita's touchscreen. So you can use it as a mouse pointer to do things like change your aspect ratio there on the fly, or implement cheats while the game is still in progress. And it's a very subtle thing, but it's one of my favorite features of any emulator I've ever used. On top of that, the compatibility with Nintendo 64 games is pretty good. I would say at least half of the back catalog is going to play just fine, and another 25% of them are going to play with some limitations. I know you've been waiting forever for this video, so without any further delay, let's jump into it. Now first things first, in order to run this emulator, you need to have a PS Vita that's been permanently modded. On top of that, I would recommend using an SD card adapter, and you can find guides for both of these on my YouTube channel here. Speaking of guides, we're going to go to my actual PlayStation Vita written guide, which I'll have linked in the video description, and this is where we're going to get our emulator. So go down to the standalone emulator section, and then grab the Daedalus X64 link, and you can see here it was updated on December 13th of 2020. All you need to do is download this VPK that's available here, and then find that downloaded file on your PC. Next, turn on your PlayStation Vita and then open up the Vita Shell app, which you should already have installed if you've done a permanent mod. Now plug your PS Vita into your computer, press the start button to confirm that the select button is tied to the USB function. Next, all you have to do is press select to start up the USB connection. On your computer, you're going to see your SD card pop up. And if you don't already have a folder named VPKs, make one here and then drag that VPK inside. Back on the Vita, close the USB connection, go to that VPK folder, and then select that VPK. It's going to ask you to install the package, you say yes, and then it's going to ask you, do you really want to do this? And you say, yeah man, I want to do it. After that, the VPK has been installed, and then close out, close, close out of the app. And there you should find it here, bouncing around. When you first start it up, it's going to check for updates and download the latest compatibility list. At that point, you're not going to really see anything in the emulator. But this is an important step, because in the background, it's made a bunch of data files that we're going to need to access next. So go back into Vita Shell, press the select button to start up a USB connection, and now go into the data folder and you should find a Daedalus folder here. Open that up, and then within here, create a folder named ROMs with a capital R. And inside this folder, you just want to drag and drop all of your Nintendo 64 games. So I'm going to grab 33 of my closest friends here and drag them over into the SD card. After that, you can close out the connection and close out a Vita shell. Now, when we open up the Daedalus app again, it's going to check for an update, and then download that compatibility list again. But after that, we're going to see all of our games listed. And I'm going to use my finger as the mouse cursor here just because it looks better visually. But you can see on the right here, it does show a little bit of info about each of your games. So let's mess around a little bit with the options and settings that we have available to us. As you can see, there's quite a bit of options available, but a lot of these, honestly, you don't really want to mess with because the default settings are actually pretty well optimized. Maybe one of the first things you are going to want to do is change the aspect ratio to 4 by 3 so it doesn't stretch out your screen. That's really going to be up to you. On top of that, you can increase the brightness and apply a bilinear filter if you'd like. Either way, as you're playing through the games, these are some of the things that you could mess with. And I'll show you some of my recommended settings here later in this video. But for now, the most important thing is to download this data files here, which is the top left option. This is going to download all the box art and media available for all of the games on the Nintendo 64 catalog. Now when we close out of this app and then start it back up again, now we have these beautiful big box arts. It kind of turns this whole experience into a joy to navigate. Now I know you're waiting for gameplay, so let's jump into that next. In general, both of the Zelda games seem to play pretty well. There's a little bit of slowdown as it caches a new scene, for example when you first jump into water, it's going to cache the fact that it splashes up. But then after that when you jump into the water again, it's not going to have any stuttering. 
Some of the easier to play games, for example Mario Kart 64, play flawlessly right out of the box, not a hint of slowdown at all. And personally with this game in particular, I like to stretch it to 16x9 because it looks really good stretched out on this big screen. Now with other games, for example Mario 64, which also runs beautifully, I prefer to play it in 4x3. And it's really hard to convey just how good this looks on the PS Vita. And remember, I'm using the PS Vita 2000 here, so it's actually just an LCD display. The OLED version looks even better. Now unfortunately, there's no way to show a constant frames per second on the top right. What I have to do is tap the screen every few seconds to show you what the frames per second are in real time. So you're going to see me tapping here pretty often on the screen. But like I mentioned, Mario 64 is just beautiful on this. And I was surprised to find that Super Smash Bros. actually plays pretty well too. I have no idea how to play this game, but if you're into Smash, this might be pretty fun. Some other games that are pretty hard to play, for example Yoshi's Story, runs actually really well. Same thing with Majora's Mask. I detected a little bit of audio stuttering, but visually the game looks really good. And this is a good time to show you some of the settings that are available. Like I mentioned earlier, you can implement cheats here in real time, and they're already preloaded for every one of these games. That's pretty awesome. Also, save game management is super easy. You can either just save the game in-game, or you can just go into this menu here and select save save state. And loading them up is just as easy. This is also the menu you're going to use to close out of your ROMs. Now F-Zero does have some texture issues, so if you go into the graphics setting, and then you mess around with the texture caching settings, you're probably going to find something that works for you. At least for me, using the fast setting fixed all of my issues. Now the frame rate on some of these games is a little bit wonky. Paper Mario is a great example. If you see here, it's actually running at 69 frames per second. And you get a little bit of audio stuttering too. Now if you go into the settings and you turn on frame limiting, it is going to limit it to 60 frames per second. But what I found is the audio gets even worse and the game starts to stutter even more. So it actually plays better at 69 frames per second. It does have a little bit of wobbliness to it in the fact that it plays a little bit fast and then a little bit slow and kind of in between there. So let's try some other things. By far the easiest thing you can do to fix performance with Nintendo 64 is to disable the audio. Because the Nintendo 64 didn't have a dedicated audio chip, everything ran through the CPU. So by turning off audio you're actually going to tax the CPU a little bit less. So as you see when I turn off the audio the frame rate jumps up to over 100 frames per second. But paradoxically if we go and turn on that frame limiter again, it is going to keep it at 60 frames per second, but it's going to feel just as sluggish as it did when the audio was on. So in that sense, I think it's better to just leave the audio on and then take that frame limit off and just deal with that little bit of wonkiness when it comes to speeding up and slowing down just by a hair. Now I'd love to say that this emulator is perfect, but it's not. There are several games like Mario Tennis that'll just crash outright. And then other games like Cruise in USA play at about 75% full speed. And it's going to be up to you whether or not you consider this to be playable. Personally, I don't. So as always, I got a couple tricks up my sleeve. So let's go into Auto Plugin and mess with some overclocking options. If you don't have Auto Plugin installed already, I have instructions in my written guide. First thing we're going to try out is this plugin called Lolita 444. And what this does is across the system, it increases the CPU clock speed from 333 megahertz to 444. So let's try it out now with a higher clock speed. We'll start with Cruise in USA, and as you can see here, it just crashes automatically. So that's one of the things that are going to happen when you try to overclock certain games. Now other games are going to work okay. For example, GoldenEye 007 is going to run at about 27 frames per second when you use this 444 MHz overclock. Now the audio is still going to be really janky, and you can definitely feel some slowdown in the gameplay itself. So let's see what other options we have. First, I'm going to uninstall the Lolita plugin. And there's a 500 megahertz version of this plugin as well, but we're going to try something else. The next one we're going to try is called PSV Shell. And this one actually gives you an overclocking menu to be able to configure your settings on the fly. To do that, you hold down select and press up, which will bring up the menus. So I'm going to set the CPU clock speed to 444 again. And as you can see here, we're averaging about 25-ish frames per second. So we're definitely still having some issues here. And it's funny, but the frame rate really depends on where your character is facing. If it's facing away from other characters, or from a wide open space, it actually runs pretty well. 
So now let's try to max out all of the settings and see how it performs. So as you can see here, we're getting about 30 frames per second. Again, we're still having some audio issues and you definitely have some slowdown in the gameplay, but this is definitely an improvement in performance. That being said, I'm never a really big fan of overclocking because I don't want to overtax my CPU or other components, and it does significantly affect the life of your battery, both in terms of gameplay and the overall life of the battery over time. So in general, I tend to not use overclock at all and then just kind of deal with the limited performance on certain games, but that's all really up to you. Okay, before we wrap up, let me show you a couple other tips. Back in the menu, if you go into the extra section, you can turn off the auto update as well as the compatibility list that happens when you first boot up the system. Also, I recommend you select the scale UI text option, which is gonna increase the font of the text in the menu. And then finally, you have a couple different themes you can play around with. There's a light one, which looks terrible, but I do like this classic one, which has a nice purple color to it. But personally, I'm gonna stick with the original dark one because it matches the color of my Vita itself. But yeah, that's much better. I like this bigger text. Okay, now anytime you make any changes to the settings that you wanna keep, make sure you select Save Global Settings. Now let's close out of the app and see what it's like when it first boots up. And now it's not checking for new updates and also not re-downloading that compatibility list. So that might be something you want to do like once a month or so, but overall I prefer to have it this way because it boots up the emulator that much faster. Okay, really that's it in a nutshell. This Nintendo 64 emulator is actually pretty simple and thankfully it's well optimized out of the box. So really all you have to do is install the emulator, load your ROMs into that specific folder, download the box art, and then just start having fun. I think overall you'll actually be surprised at how well Nintendo 64 plays on this new emulator. And who knows, maybe they'll have even better updates here in the future. Regardless, I'm happy to report that Nintendo 64 plays really well on the PS Vita. It's one of my favorite systems to emulate on this console. That's it for this video, I really appreciate you watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful. And we will see you next time. Happy gaming!